Hello, here's my homily for the third Sunday of Easter, which is the 18th of April. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things we need to ask ourselves in Eastertide is, what is the resurrection for? Why was it necessary? What was God doing? We might answer that it was the way God defeated death for us and opened for us the way from death to eternal life. It's the way our sins are taken away. Now that's certainly true, but it misses out one thing. And it's the thing that St John refers to in our second reading today, 1 John 2, 1 to 5. There it's made clear that the resurrection isn't just for us, but for the whole world. Clearly, even at that early stage in the history of Christianity, people were thinking rather too much about themselves and their family and their fellow Christians. So St John is quite firm. He says, Jesus is the sacrifice that takes our sins away. And then to make it absolutely clear, he adds, and not only ours. Yes, it's very easy to find ourselves thinking what advantage God's saving actions bring to us. And forget that when Jesus dies and rises again, he dies and rises again to save all of us, not some of us. He rises to new life for the whole world. This should make us think about the church and the mass in a very different way, shouldn't it? Yes, it is wonderful that the risen Jesus, his body and blood, are especially present for us at Mass in the Blessed Sacrament. And furthermore, that he's especially present too in the church, gathered in prayer. But he isn't present just for us. His presence is always for the world, whether the world recognises that presence or not. This is one of the reasons why of all the different words used for this wonderful way in which he becomes present, words like Eucharist or communion, the word mass has become the most important, although sadly often most un misunderstood, because the word mass comes from the word mission. It's something that is given to empower us, to send us out, to take his living presence into the world. Hopefully, this might make us think about today's Gospel from Luke 24 in a rather different way. It's natural to focus in on the things that mean most to us, to think of the doubts expressed and be glad that even with Jesus actually visible to them, they still had doubts, just like we do. It's natural to note how the risen Jesus breaks through their doubts and brings them joy at knowing he is really present with them, and so with us. It's easy, as we think about these things, to fail to notice that almost immediately the risen Jesus is telling them that he suffered and then rose on the third day, not to give them joy, but so that his message could be preached to all the nations. And just to rub it in, Jesus says quite firmly, you are witnesses to this. Actually, once we got over the shock of that rather awesome challenge, there's something very uplifting in realising that the Mass is so very much more than what we experience or hope to experience at any Mass that we happen to attend. For the power of the Mass, like the power of any of the sacraments, we must always remember, is not dependent on our feeble efforts to do God's will. The risen Jesus is present in power at every Mass, despite the weakness and failings of the people who are there or the priest who is celebrating. In fact, I like to think of the Mass as a power socket. The electricity is there in the house or the factory already, but nothing happens until we plug in. And then everything changes and all sorts of things are possible, depending on what piece of machinery gets the power. There's always a tendency to think that it all depends on us, that it's we who have to make the machinery work, that unless we try very hard to be good and perfect, nothing will happen. 
We spy that word perfection in the second reading and immediately begin again to dwell on ourselves, on our efforts to be more what God wants us to be. But we need to read that sentence again, for all we need to do is obey. And basically that means to plug ourselves in, to celebrate the Mass, to do this in memory of him. And then it is God who makes his love comes, come to perfection in us. And God's love will work through us in all sorts of ways. Indeed, his love may well be present in our very struggles and doubts and imperfections shared. His love perfected through our imperfections. Don't forget to be comforted by the fact that most of the saints whom we venerate became more and more aware of their failings the closer they got to God. Of course, that doesn't mean we should glory in our failings. We should certainly try hard to reflect to the glory of the risen Lord as best we can. But in the end, the glory must come from God and not from us. This is surely why almost all the stories where the risen Lord is met in the Gospels show people struggling to understand, to take in what is actually happening. God's presence is bound to be unsettling. And this means that if we feel too comfortable at Mass, if we fail to recognise the challenge of his presence, then we need to open our eyes a little wider. If our church becomes rather like a club of people with similar tastes supporting one another in a little bubble somewhat cut off from the world, then we need to hear Jesus saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And to be aware of the words of one of the great Psalms that says, Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord the mighty in battle. Every Mass, then, is a proclamation of the presence and power of the risen Lord Jesus and is celebrated for the world and not just for us. Often at Mass, we actually say, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. And at every Mass we hail the risen Jesus present with us and for us in the Blessed Sacrament as the Lamb of God that takes away not just our sins, but the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is why we must never shut ourselves off from the world as Christians have been tempted to do down through the ages, especially when facing persecution. In Britain, Catholics faced years of persecution by the state and inevitably had to celebrate mass in a hidden way. But sadly, some of that atmosphere is still with us. We need to shake off this fear and know that we have, wherever we are, whatever kind of Catholic we are, that we have something wonderful to share with the whole world. So may God bless you during this Easter season in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.